Thank you, Donald, for that very kind introduction. And good morning to you all. <coughs> and and um, immediately there, um, Donald mentioned the importance of practicality of being able to understand the spiritual concepts and then bring them down into everyday life. And of course, if you were to look at the title of this talk, you might say, well, no, really, that is way above in the clouds as well, initiation, immortality, etc. But it's within our grasp. But we haven't yet completed the process of self-realization. And I, <clears throat> I understand that Madame Blavatsky said, uh, after several of her books had been published, so maybe it was the early 1900s, she said, there is enough information out there now to make masters of you all, but you lack the synthesis to bring it all together. And this indeed is the problem that we are faced with as uh, esoteric students, theosophists, seekers of the wisdom, that we have to pull together the unwieldy, sometimes uh, um, quite disturbingly disparate strands of the ancient wisdom. That being the case, um, we find that we have to, thank you, we find that we have to um, embrace the wisdom and bring it down into some meaningful whole. And the uh, diagram that I've drawn for you for this talk, you have in front of you. And I want to start with this diagram because it is, and I apologise some of you may not have the top, it actually should say synthesised diagram of the life map. And that's what I was urged to call it, synthesised diagram of the life map. And this is some attempt to show you the narrowness of consciousness that we normally operate between. And uh, I've written it in there in the red triangle and again out here this morning of the personality. Here's the personality here uh, in its physical, emotional and mental forms. Now, because of the, um, the brain, a wonderful seventh ray instrument that it is, our consciousness is limited to that sphere, but it's very real to us when we work within the physical, emotional and mental worlds. Now, we consider that we have had many, many lifetimes on the path. Um, and before that, many, many lifetimes of involution, hundreds maybe of lifetimes, where we were falling into matter and uh, creating for the soul and the monad spiritual staying power by our descent into matter. There may be far, far sp more spiritual beings out there in the universe that don't get the opportunity to fall into matter. Think of the gradation. If we can reach back to spirit and the monad, which is what I'll be talking about today, with the experience of matter, that is a huge spectrum of graded consciousness. But for that, and with the human condition, the fourth kingdom, dominated by the fourth way, we're only going to get harmony through conflict. That's the fourth ray of harmony through conflict. will ensure that the human condition is such that we learn through our mistakes and through our suffering, but that there is redemption always on the way. And so if we consider these past lives that we've had, we're not going to be given immediate knowledge of them in this life because it would interfere big style with what we uh, have got to be um, um, set out to do in this life. And I would ask you for today to consider a soul or consciousness model, which is a triplicity. And this triplicity is um, quite simply, I'm going to call it the instinctual soul, the personality and the spiritual soul because it's quite clear that we have to spiritualize our nature and then we have to spiritualize the other kingdoms of nature and in doing so we will spiritualize the planet and that is the task of the incoming seventh ray the first ray is the divine intent and if we think of a Euroboros, a snake which is um, 
attempting to bite its tail and um, I didn't get GCSE art actually there were O levels in my day but I don't like to say that um, we've got the first ray the second ray the third ray the fourth ray the fifth ray the sixth ray and the seventh ray and we can see that there is a peculiar closeness between the first ray and the seventh ray and so the first ray we can consider to be divine intent it's a will and it's an impulse and it's an initiative and an initiator as well and the seventh ray's task is to implement that divine intent on the planet and so as we move through the stages I'm going to describe today we are all urged towards participating in this grand plan of evolution and therefore part of my teaching is the rays because we will all polarize to a particular ray and our soul will belong and it already does in my understanding all of our individual souls already belong to a particular ashram on a ray on the buddhic plane and the buddhic plane of course exists well above what we're used to the buddhic plane exists here and that's where the soul operates from as a center of buddhi and so we've heard about the intuition the plane of buddhi includes the intuition what i call the highest possible aspect of mind not to be mixed up with even abstract mind and certainly not concrete mind and so we now have to consider the effect of all these incarnations in building personality after personality after personality what do they do uh, they bring with us and through the mechanism of the permanent atoms they bring with us a very facile and easily picked up identification with the three planes the planes the physical plane the emotional plane and the mental plane and particularly the emotional plane will cause us problems why will the emotional plane cause us problems quite simply because I'd like you to consider this particular model now where we have the spiritual plane of force and the soul as we know at its lowest point hits higher manas which is mentality and that the mental plane is essentially a form plane okay we talk about thought forms Leb Beter in his beautiful book that he wrote with Annie Besant and some of those thought forms that are most famous and probably best ever clairvoyant was able to bring through and there's so many wonderful pictures in that book thought forms and they of course are essentially the province of the soul but of course uh, it's the soul linking to personality through the Antakarana which was mentioned in our meditation today that we have to build the bridge but for now just consider the personality and the emotions are a force and we can reincarnate very very quickly if the emotional force is that strong because of the link of the force plane to the physical form indeed it's my understanding that if uh, a youngster is say tragically killed in a road accident as their astral body is growing they're full of desire they're full of uh, needing to express themselves in the world they after they die they go into the astral world the desire is so strong to come back into a physical body they can be reincarnated very 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 quickly because the force pulls them back into form very very quickly and it does anyway for all of us if we continue to identify with this and so we have to enter upon a program of discipleship disciplines where we consciously decide we will change the energies in our life and within our being and that will entail raising the vibrations of the person as a whole and you can see if you like the aura of a person what they're able to give out uh, will increase I think the Buddha was said to have an aura of something 
like nine miles or maybe somewhere it's a huge distance and the animals and the birds in the trees knew when he was about to, from a great distance about to approach and that's because of the radiatory capacity of the seventh ray and in conjunction of course with the heart and with the will and so we are presented and we're not told this at school with a problem here because we will have more than likely a crystallized emotional body and a crystallized mental body some things we, we just don't want to accept mentally because we're programmed from previous lives to understand this is the way of thinking or that's the way of thinking and harder still of course is the emotions and I've had the privilege of meeting many hundreds of people over the last 15 years or so and the biggest problem facing single people treading the path from my experience is the control of the emotional body because it's a force body and also because we have habitually built crystallized patterns of reaction into our everyday life how dare you say that to me why do you go off the handle when anybody ever says that that's the way I am well it is but it's not good enough for the soul in the long run because as you can see from this idea of the um, force and form planes this is going to get in the way of that and the emotional body on your diagram has to be transcended into the buddhic body and this is the province of the second initiation where we have to take from the solar plexus around about the, the stomach area there to the heart center vitally important and the heart center is the center of buddhi i love you full stop I love mankind and if the if I can be shown a way to help mankind I will give my heart out to mankind because that's what the masters do and we're not there yet but we have to take the steps there and we will be helped oh we will be helped if we show that we are interested we send out a beacon of light to those who watch mankind and if they see a beacon of light where you are trying and you may not think you're getting results you will get help you will get support you will find something comes into your life that tremendously inspires you to do something which you didn't think you were capable of doing and so we are imprisoned the soul has often been called the imprisoned splendor and it's not only imprisoned by waking consciousness <laughs> we bring through with us as I've been talking in my uh, study group this week, we bring through with us uh, the patterns that we have to correct, as well as the growth opportunities that we have the, the, uh, the option to take. And of course, that includes our karma. And we may have different views on karma. Maybe I, as an occultist, have to um, uh, delineate it for people to the to the greatest extent the mystic would say as I know one mystic who says it's one of these um, um, uh, people that comes along um, with the Eastern robes and the the swamis and they talk about things and I said to him you know what is karma and he said I tell you what karma is you go out into the street hit by a bus in hospital for six months that is karma <laughs> and it is it is but at the same time that karma sometimes needs to be understood and that's where the occultist view of reaching through the mind is useful if you are strong enough and able enough to say I'll take what I get and I'll deal with it then perhaps you don't need the delineation of karma but whatever way you look at it it is still part of the instinctual soul and that instinctual soul is our habits and what we bring forward in terms of karma the fruits of our past lives and so I ask you ladies and gentlemen to consider to perhaps assess yourself as to how much your um, your consciousness is guided by 
what I'm going to refer to simply as vehicles of consciousness. And I think this is where the, uh, the difficulty arises. The physical, emotional and mental bodies are vehicles of consciousness, but too often we see them as our consciousness. And our consciousness is much more lofty than that and requires to be lifted out of the prison. And when the time comes for each of us and we're all on different stages of the path, we have to look to control and or modify the actions of these bodies. Now, I have people come to me and say, you know, only one question. Please tell me I'm not coming back again. I believe in reincarnation, but I have had a belly full of lives on this planet and I'm not coming back. Now, my understanding and my answer is, it wasn't you that decided you would incarnate and it's not going to be you that decides when the cycle of incarnations are finished but you can help the soul greatly in that matter by starting the disidentification process and I'm not going to say too much more about it but ask yourself the great Taurian pledge and I say Taurian because this is something that is a characteristic of the sign of Taurus Taurus is the sign of the Buddha and at the highest level it's illumination can you be and work, are you in this world without being of this world? To what degree are you able to go through? And you don't talk about good karma or bad karma or good experience or bad experience. It's all experience. And you go through, your life, but too often we're, you know, I don't like that, I've got to sort that out. And one of the things I was asked, um, a question of came as a result of writing in my spiritual diary how can I serve mankind effectively and we're talking about a number of years ago now and I think I've only ever had one glimpse of a master and this is what I got I got two things the first thing was Edward are you free and are you equipped if you want to take on this role and there's no, I was told, there's no doubt in your sincerity, but are you free and are you equipped? Of course, I had to then write down, what do you mean by freedom? And what do you mean by equipped? Because I wasn't sure. And it was really serious to me. And that's what I got back. And I, I look back in my, to get the exact words. We are free only, and this is, I believe the master, when we learn to detach let go of the attachment from trying to control the outcome of issues and events through manipulation of consciousness either physically emotionally or mentally politicians may fail on that one because they're forever trying to control the outcome of events by the manipulation of consciousness and many other uh, tricks that they may use in general there are some good ones obviously but basically ask yourself how much in other words pass through life do your work and stop the as Colin said the other uh, last night the word, the word of the seminar uh, the summer school entangling because these are the mind and the uh, emotions are wavicular and we entangle and we meet people we've entangled with before and we can get entangled with other people watch with whom you entangle or with what you entangle because you are making um, uh, uh, more energy forms that need to be worked out maybe in uh, uh, um, lives to come in the future and what about equipped and the equipment turned out to be the integrated personality and of course this leads on from identification from identification if we start to consider that these bodies now are not going to be allowed free range physically emotionally mentally we're going to do something about them my definition of an integrated personality would be somebody that could think pretty much without emotion. Now, we'll always be aspiration in our thoughts, and that's not emotion. Emotion in the, in, in the thoughts is what theosophy calls kamamanus. 
desire, kama, manas, mind. We're talking about the ability to think out a concept and have a concept on the mental plane. And if you're really serious about manifesting a concept on the mental plane, you will allow thought to move in a circle. If you take the general thought and you reason from the general to the particular on the downgoing arc and back from the particular side of the issue back to the general, you will have circumscribed in thought your concept. Be any emotion in it because you will be using reasoning facilities to do this. And you will, anything that is is circumscribed is is likely to manifest and so you can try this with something that you want to put into it like a project into the world but you have to go from the general to the particular and the particular to the general and that's on the the lower mental plane using ordinary intellect or reason and then you have to use the emotions as a motive power or channeling force. And too often and in too many people's lives, the emotions are used to distract us. What we like, what we don't like, what we want to be involved in, what we don't want to be involved in. What, there are so many distractions out there. Um, I'm very pleased that, you know, I've now got my Xbox activity down to about 15 hours a week. There are so many ways in which you can squander your time and time and resources are very important when you're treading the path because they're energy. And that energy has to be used constructively and I know some very spiritual people who've come back with illnesses like Emmy and they can't find the energy to do this or they haven't got the money to do that and money is, Alice Bailey called it, concrete prana. And she said it can energize the project and you know, we, we can see that our use of energy is very important we have a responsibility you to use it wisely and that responsibility increases with our point of evolution uh, or our point on the path and then finally we need to bring down the concept that has been set out mentally channeled emotionally with the motive power of the emotions rather than using them for attachments and then we have to be coordinated on the physical plane that's no mean task obviously and it can take maybe many lifetimes of, of effort to have an integrated personality but life roughs us up we have to go and work with people we choose not to work with we invariably don't we have family problems because we've entangled with those people in the past and now we've got to come back and we've got to set the record straight and we were talking about some of this last night on the panel about uh, about um, the resolution of conflict and all of this strengthens our mental and emotional body and so it's all the 10th house in esoteric astrology which is also the house of initiation because when you've got this integrated personality you can move forward to the initiations and I now want to talk to you you don't have to have it for the first two initiations but I believe that it is required for the third initiation now I don't like to use the words too much and actually they're not too important but let's talk about how we now move forward and I want to leave plenty of time for questions today um, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm go, go through this reasonably briefly because there may be questions that come from it um, if we take the physical body um, the first of our vehicles it is governed or the initiation called the first issue is governed by the seventh ray and it's the order part of the seventh ray are you relatively ordered in your life are you relatively able to um, um, plan uh, uh, execute your life run the domestic budget see the children get to school and back again this type of thing and most of us in the Western world will have passed the first initiation so I'm not going to I'm not going to spend too much time on it but if there is an area in your life like there is in mine documents chaos see to it inject some more order and you will be using the seventh ray and these rays exist 
in the invisible realms or the unconscious realms and if you use the seventh ray or the third ray of abstract thought you pull into your aura those energies and they strengthen the overall energy and so we could just take the seven rays and say I will take each of these rays and I will try and go through and use drain off the energies use them for my own purpose and then we build it into our psyche and our psyche becomes more expanded in in terms of yoga a very important the shock the chakra path is the sacral to the throat and the sacral rules the sex function and as we tread the path the sexual energy which is very strong at that center has to be guided somewhat into higher channels and I was always warned that as my teaching work continued I needed to make sure that the energy was at the throat center and I would say to my groups, you know, this is very important. I said, and if you want to know uh, a, a man who is um, uh, probably operating with more sacral than the throat centre, then seek out the whispering man. You know, and I said, that's what you'd want to avoid. And they all say, they invariably say to me, no, show us who the whispering men are, because they've got the energy at the sacral centre. Well, it depends where your preference lies, but it's a very important point that we're talking about energy systems here and your controlled and consistent use of the energy. How do you use your energy? At the second, called the transformation, and I've put in brackets there, this is the spiritual phoenix. The phoenix bird rising from the ashes, which is part of the theme of our summer school this year, is about regeneration and transformation. And it is very often to do with the um, emotional side where we can leave behind something and go and not ruminate over it but fly on to something greater and this is particularly difficult for people because uh, the energy has to be taken from the solar plexus to the heart and the solar plexus is the center that we struggled with the progressive opening on in the age of Atlantis that we touched on last night and of course here it is I me mine I will love you if you love me back and if you don't fisticuffs some people say to me I give so much to my wife my husband whatever and I don't get as much back often the soul will put you with a person like that there may be a karmic link as well so that you can learn to take the love to the heart I love you full stop it's unconditional and you can't love mankind impersonally if you can't understand the uh, importance of moving from the solar plexus to the heart and then thirdly I say a little bit more about this one thirdly this is the um, uh, raising of the kundalini energy because there is a point between the second and the third initiation and uh, I've been I've been given the information in meditation that it is at point 2.7 okay nearly up to the third initiation you've passed the second initiation your your emotional body doesn't have to be completely under the control of the soul but when you have an emotional trauma you don't go to pieces trauma you hold your nerve as you go through it that's what they're looking for with the second initiation and it's a huge initiation to pass because you're then quite rapidly looking at the mental body and usually people are doing the two at the same time they're working with their emotions they're trying to improve and they're working on their studies the ancient wisdom the teachings so that they're already partly there towards the second uh, the third initiation and they go 2.1 2.2 2.3 quite quickly up to 2.7 and then I understand that we are then or can be trusted by higher beings to altruistically carry out on behalf of mankind the work of the divine plan and at this point according to Bailey electric fire or faux hat which is positively charged will be applied to the seven head centers 
there's not just etheric chakras they're in other uh, levels as well we mainly deal with them just in etheric centers the seven head centers and kundalini which is the negatively charged energy which is in all form but latent is here's the raw she's negatively charged and latent and as the positive fire which I, I, I've been shown symbolically as a violet fire starts to permeate she wakens she hears the roar of her mate she turns and she hisses and she starts to move up progressively up Shushumma and as she does so she energizes the various chakras bringing more life and more consciousness to the human being but before that fire can be applied we have the masters have to be sure because this is overseen by a number of masters forming a triangle with you has to be seen to be safe because otherwise the human being's constitution could be ruined and there could for that life and there could be lasting effects in other lives and so they jealously guard this fire I understand and so that is the third initiation I want to move on because I want to give as I say plenty of time for questions um, to the fifth initiation and give you a quote straight out of this is the the masterdom and the importance of the incoming seventh ray Dwaj Kool says of the fifth initiation when the light of all of the seven rays is blended with that of the seventh ray then light supernal is created and is known to be the equivalent of the highest aspect of the divine light that can penetrate into the physical plane this can be seen as the true synthesis of spirit and matter and it is the role of the seventh ray of ceremonial order and magic in the next 2000 years so part of what I exhort you to do is to look into the qualities of the seventh ray look into the order in your own life and look into your ability to radiate out to the other kingdoms of nature as well as your fellow man because you will then be contributing to the spiritualization of the planet through your radiatory energy being uh, suffused into those kingdoms and so I come briefly to touch on this idea of immortality and as I found I have I've been able to build a rainbow bridge which is the first little um, bridge on your diagram here I've got it in green here we get this great confrontation with the dweller on the threshold and the dweller on the threshold is the sum total of your negative emotions your fears your desires that have been uh, uh, um, thwarted desires which have been too easily expended and therefore habitual in this lifetime and the dweller thrives on the need to survive and we have built that need to survive in us hugely over all our incarnations but there comes a point when we are confronted with the dweller on one side and the angel of the presence the which is symbolized by Venus and expresses love Venus is also of course the sign of the Ankh and what was the Ankh in ancient Egypt but the symbol of immortality and so I asked about immortality and we have this confrontation with the dweller but when we are able to see the uh, the fact that this is a limiting influence and that we can say truthfully to our souls that if I can love humanity down here and radiate from the heart it doesn't actually matter whether I'm in a physical body to radiate it I can radiate it from the inner planes and that is the challenge do you trust in the power of love to the extent that you don't need a physical body to do it with and if you do you've overcome the survival that the dweller so desperately wants to use to keep you in incarnation and I've been able to say yes 
and death holds no fear for me or my wife or whatever because we're starting to understand the importance of this intangible energy of love that is so desperately needed down on the planet and so I asked the question what about all these people in theosophy who are trying to do and help mankind through the service essentially of teaching but lots of you are healers etc and the answer I got back was maybe there are many people in your midst who didn't need to incarnate but they've come down again as a service and a sacrifice to their fellow man so strong was the love impulse in their heart uh, in, in, in their heart chakra the physical heart in their heart that they've come down again through their love of mankind and that's what the masters have done they they can take bodies they can come back to earth and we're talking about if you take bear, the reappearance of the Christ as a possibility in the future and so just to finish on immortality I was asked to consider two types of beings when I asked the question and the first type is the type that you you can meet when you are heavily involved with uh, building the Antakarana through study and through study we build our um, uh, uh, higher mind um, energies are brought together and are focused in, in studies such as well we were talking about probably the king of them all anthropogenesis but it stretches the mind we don't want to stretch them too much but we want to stretch the mind and these beings are referred to in some esoteric literature as the manasaputras and I think that they're Davic in origin, but nonetheless the Manasaputra stage is a stage that we will go through where we come polarised to the mental plane and may be infused by a Manasaputra. But later came the dream for me, out of the waters of emotion came this shimmering silver head which I understood to be wisdom. Not knowledge, but wisdom. And this was a dragon of wisdom looking at me and confronting me as if to say this is the next stage and immortality as it's been taught to me is the joining of the heart and the head as mentioned again in Donald's uh, we have to bring the two together and if we are able to work with the higher mind and infuse that with the spiritual will because remember the will has to have legs and it does it through mentality and take that head center configuration together with the heart center configuration provided by the dragons of wisdom because remember love hyphen wisdom is one quality it has an aspect of love exemplified by the Christ and an aspect of wisdom exemplified by the Buddha and so we bring those two together we can be assured of immortality but that's a long long way from our miserable little lives on earth that we might have if we're polarized simply in our personality bodies and at that point I'd like to say if we can have some questions I'd be happy to take them